prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Prayer, God, because of your abundant love, you chose to bring light and order into the formless void to create a world of unsurpassed beauty, and you saw that it was good. We ask that you continue to recreate the world with that same attentive love to bring light into today's ever-increasing chaos and darkness, where we have failed to be stewards and carers of your creation, replenish our hearts so that we too can renew the face of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, um, just quickly, uh, just a brief introduction on why we are doing this additional webinar on top of the four webinars that we've had. So, we all know that COVID had has dramatically affected how we are all operating in most parts of the world. And um, given the physical distancing protocols, pretty much everything is now moving online. And conferencing has gone virtual, even networking now happens in forums and other digital formats. Um, there is therefore a need, even for the time being, while we are in the situation or in the scenario, to transition to online work. And that includes even organizing within us in GCCM and uh, some of our Laudato Si animators. So we organized this webinar to help those who would need to shift from in-person to digital organizing. And this is also to help us understand what it means, what is digital organizing, and to give us an overview of the different platforms and tools available for us. So we will also give you some examples of uh, digital organizing activities which you can opt to do as you plan for your final project in this course. As mentioned in earlier emails and in the syllabus, uh, we, will, as we will practice the skill of putting together an event, a campaign, or an activity with our communities, our friends and families in relation to the celebration of Laudato Si Week. And um, this will be our final project, or what Tomas calls as capstone project. So um, we will be discussing more about Laudato Si Week in our meeting next week, uh, together with me or some of the other program managers and coordinators of the different regions and countries. Um, but just to briefly talk about the Laudato Si Week, 2020 marks the fifth anniversary of the encyclical, which we all love. And it was signed May 24, 2015. Um, and this year, we will be celebrating the Laudato Si Week from May 16 to 24. The, uh, the theme of this year's celebration is everything is connected. So um, we are now all called to create a web of global solidarity. That this could be through prayer, reflection, or advocacy, um, which is what we feel is needed at this time, given our current reality of the pandemic. So for the animators, we, given that we will be having our final project in relation to the celebration of Laudato Si Week, uh, so for most contexts, this would be a digital event because of the situation where we are not allowed to uh, do in-person activities. And um, we will be registering our activities also in the website, uh, which is the laudatoseaweek.org. But more of this we will be discussing next week because we will be planning together about what you will uh, be doing for uh, as your final project for the Laudato Si Week. So what activities can we do digitally or what does even digital organizing mean? So our resource speaker, let me put up her picture here. <laughs> our resource speaker will introduce us to digital and social media organizing. And I'm very happy and grateful to introduce to you uh, Adriana, who is our Global Social Media Coordinator for GCCM. She is from Ecuador. So our speakers now came from all over the world. <laughs> and uh, our 
uh, speaker now is from Latin America. She is a journalist. She has an MA in strategic communication. And she has eight years experience in managing, management of digital content, social media platforms, design and branding, events organizing, and communication strategies, among others. So please welcome our speaker, Adriana Gonzalez Cabrera. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, now I'm going to start sharing my screen with you. Tell me, all of you can see my presentation? Yes? I think that's great. You don't see the chat box on the presentation, right? Nope. No, okay. Okay, first. I'm gonna just close this chat right here and I'm gonna open it later. Well, first of all, thank you for being in this webinar to talk about digital and social media campaigning. To start a little bit, I would ask just want to say thank you, Cherry, for that introduction. And I'm going to see how this works. Okay, great. <laughs> well, as mentioned before, as a journalist, I'm from Ecuador. I have almost eight years working in communication campaigns. I used to work for humanitarian organizations and also connected with private sectors, sometimes and social institutions. So I'm really happy to spend this time with you. Now, to start, what we will learn today, I dedicated kind of thinking the syllabus in your necessities as Laudato Si animators and other content that I believe is important you understand. Because communication per se is a very broad science, so it's really important to understand first what is a campaign and some, what is the difference between the traditional, the digital, some step, step by step that can help you to plan the campaign, resources and tools, some ideas for the Laudato Si animators. And to finish, I'm gonna do a quick wrap up with some basic ideas and also with dedicate some minutes to a Q&A. So the first thing is, what is a communication campaign? And to get to this definition, I had to search to different books and to different speakers, but I can summarize a campaign as a communication effort led by an organization or an individual to achieve a specific goal in a target audience. That phrase sounds like very kind of communicational, but what does this mean? You know, and for that, I kind of like divide this big phrase in small groups. A communication effort is an attempt, can be from an individual or for a group. This attempt to be achievable, you need to consider different resources. One is the physical, the human, financial, technological, organizational, and reputational. Thinking in a communication agency, how this usually works is that the physical is the office. The humans are the coordinator of social media, the writer, the translation officer. The financial is the budget if you're gonna do, if you're gonna invest on social media ads. Technological could be the programs, the Adobe program, for example. Organizational, it's when you have this process that you create a content and someone has to prove it before it's live. And the reputational, it's according to the public perception of the organization. This is, these resources are mostly used for agency, but I thought it's really important that you understand that because a campaign is a communication effort, you have to make sure you have those resources that you have the time, that you have at least a program, that you have uh, you know, the, the creativity to develop this. And also if you want to at some point invest a little bit, well, that you need to have at least a couple of, of dollars to make that financial uh, investment. So with this, I just want to highlight that for sure it's an effort and for sure you have to put some effort to it. The second thing is the goal. In a campaign, you need to know what do you want to accomplish? What is the big idea that you really want to achieve? In communication, we have different terminology, and for me, it's very important that you understand this. One thing is the goal, one thing is the objectives, the other thing are the strategies and the tactics. They are not the same. The goal is the big idea, like what you want. The objectives is the measurable actions. They are like, the measure a way to achieve that goal. And the objectives need to always be smart. 
a smart is it's a way of writing the objective, I will say like this. Maybe some of my colleagues would disagree, but I do believe it's a way that you can write your objective in a way that is more strategical. A SMART means the S a specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time framing. Like each letter means something. And you have to achieve that when you write that objective. The strategies are different because the strategies is the general approach or method that you're gonna use to achieve that objective. And finally, it's the tactics that are these very specific little, little actions that you're going to do to achieve that goal. So this, I wanted to use like an example to explain this. When you do a campaign, you really need to have these four things very clear. And for these, I make an example with the Laudatosi animators. Like the big goal for us will be to increase the register of Laudatosi animators. That's what we want. Our objective, in order to be smart, to be measurable, to be relevant, it's get 2,000 registered for the April edition of Audato C Animators during the first semester of 2020. This objective, how I wrote this, I respect the smart idea because I put the 2,000 that shows the objective can be measurable, the time framing, which is the first trimester, it's relevant for the organization, it's achievable. So this is an example of how you can see this smart terminology applies in the way you write an objective. The strategy that it's the how will be, okay, I want more Laudatosi animators to register to answer to Pope Francis call. This is gonna be my objective. My strategy will be to provide information and benefits of Laudatosi animators. So people can get to know more about the program and motivate to really become one. Now that's my strategy. That's how I'm gonna use it to sharing benefits and overall general information of the program. As a tactic, we're gonna do like a specific thing is that each week I'm gonna share three success stories of certified Laudato C animators. So I have this big idea and I like just make it more achievable and real in terms of action. And that's how it's really important like to understand this goal, objective and strategy and tactic. The final thing related to this overall idea of the campaign is the audience. And the audience for me is like the most important thing because even though we can use digital channels, we're talking to real people. For that reason, we really need to understand where is these people, where is their behavior, where are their needs in order we can provide them value to our campaign. So in thinking in the audience, we really need to be careful and choose the proper audience to listening and understanding. Now, let's have a quick look and definition at communication campaign. Now that I explained you this goal, strategy, tactic, communication for audience, we're going to do a little, little exercise, one minute. I found this amazing poster from our Caritas amazing partners. And this is a poster about a campaign they're doing. And with all this I have explaining to you, I want you to answer to me, what do you think is the goal of this campaign? What do you think? You can leave it in the comment section. What do you think is the big goal of that campaign? Exactly, exactly. All of you have answered really, really well. It's and hunger. Let me come here to the presentation. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's really clear in this poster what they want. And I think they have been very strategical in the way they are doing the messages and the content. So that's a really good example of why we have to look for, you know, to be super clear in what we want. Now that we talk a little bit about um, what is a campaign, let's think the difference between a traditional digital and, and a social media campaign. What is the difference? If I'm a journalist, if I work in a communication agency and I have to develop a campaign, what is the difference between something traditional and digital? Well, the main difference is the medium of the channel. Because even though if you're working a campaign in a traditional media, maybe radio, or if you're gonna do something digital on social media, you still need to have a goal, objective, a strategy, tactics, understand your audience. It's the same, which change is the channel. 
and with the channel of course all the things are going to change like the messaging like the creativity how we're going to deliver these ideas or how we're going to achieve this big goal but the main difference is the channel like just to have a quick uh, view where uh, this traditional communication channel that can be used where this is print broadcast direct email telephone outdoor billboard in terms of digital, I have mentioned one of them here, but also some of them that are not channels per se, but there are like a strategies that are more positive to the channel, but I'm going to explain this now. Well, in terms of digital, we have the website, we have email marketing, we have social media, we have apps, those are digital channels. We have only online display ads. That is when you are in a website and you see like a pop-up banner and for example you're reading your news in the new york times site and then you see this image and to buy a shampoo or something well that is an online display ad also these three these three last are like one it's more like a technique it's inbound marketing that is usually used in digital channels to get information from users in order to take them in a user journey experience. For example, if you are in your social media and then you see someone that says register to this webinar and then you provide your information and then you receive an email and then you start all this journey until you get the webinar, that is because you have been, you have been attracted to them through an inbound marketing strategy. The pay-per-click that it's as I was mentioning you before regarding you are in the website of a news and you see a pop up and you may click that every time someone may click the company needs to pay the platform that is supporting them from the ads and in order but to create traffic and it's, it's more like a way a technique. And the last one is SEO that is the search engine optimization and it's when websites usually add the keywords three phrases so people can see the name of the companies like in the first pages of the search. And for example, when you put ice cream on Google and you see three companies in the beginning, be sure those companies have been investing to be those three. So I really think what's important like to share this with you because they're like the most common techniques related to digital and they're like always connected with these channels. The other thing is that I want to be very clear with this. Organizations in terms of communication can develop 360 campaigns. 360 campaigns involve traditional and digital. They can, they find a way to post the messages in all of the channels in order to be more reachable and get even more people aware of a campaign. However, if we think only on digital campaigns, digital campaigns can be developed in all different channels. For example, if I want to sell a shampoo, I do a social media post, but also through that social media, I get the emails and then I use email marketing and I also send people to visit my website. So I take the user through different channels. That can be a possibility in a digital campaign. However, another scenario is that you can have a digital communication campaign only on social media. And for example, if we think in this ice bucket challenge, that was, all, that was a campaign mostly done on social media. So you have, in terms of campaigning, you have these three possibilities. A 360 campaign that merged traditional and digital, a digital campaign that used all the digital channels, or a digital campaign that is only done on social media. Now let's get more digital. <laughs> and I wanna like really set this to you before going to the step-by-step -step because I really think it's super important. Why is a digital or social media campaign different? What is there different from the traditional campaign? And why now in this COVID situation, social media campaigns or digital campaigns are becoming more popular? Because it's, it's a way to stay connected and digital give you some things that traditional media doesn't give you. One of them is audience contribution. What is audience contribution? When you are in your living room and you're watching TV, you get the ad, it finished, the news started, like that was all. You never contribute nothing, you just receive the message. In social media, it's different because you can put an ad on Facebook and people can actually comment to you, give it a like, share, tag a friend, 
answer to you, talk to you. So you have to be really connect to your audience. And that's something that digital give you and traditional don't. Another thing is trust building. Because in traditional media, you're mostly like provide information. You're not able to talk with people. And on social media, even this contribution which is just so valuable, can, if you don't know how to manage, can be a risk. Because if you are a company and you're not delivering what you should be delivering, you're not given the services, people can actually complain and can put you a brand in a very difficult position. But if you are a brand or a person that, an individual that uses these social media channels and is always being honest, always connecting to people, you are trust building with them. And finally, is that digital lets you combine marketing, technology, and creativity. And I think that's something very interesting about digital campaigns because there are a lot of possibilities in terms of digital communication, and I think it's very open to creativity. Another thing is that before we start, I really want to point out this point related to best practices. And I really want to be like super clear to you and random use of digital channels will not produce any result. It's like a person did not wake up and said, I'm going to post, I'm uh, going to make a post right now and I'm going to get 300 likes. That's not how it works. You really need to sit down, think your goal, your strategy, your tactic, your objectives, think really, really, really carefully what you want, consider your audience develop a plan and then execute that plan. Be always very strategical. The second point is like to be honest in all your social media efforts. If you say you're going to do a webinar, you have to deliver that webinar because there are like users that are following you and trusting that you're going to actually do it. The other thing is that before you begin, understand your audience behavior. And you're going to see like some terminology that I have been using through all the presentation. But it's really important. We really need to put audience first and understand who they are, where they are, in order to be clear with what we want to share with them. The other thing is because of this contribution uh, a scenario that we have on digital channels, we always need to be open to participation and feedback and be open to answer to that in a very gentle way and also something that reflects the brand values. And if you are doing something as an individual, at least something you know that it's friendly and that you are able to talk and be open. And the last thing is like we are aware of evolution of technology. Every single week, something is changing in the internet, in social media. And just be aware of that. I totally encourage you to read the blogs from, I know, Hotsuite have a very, very amazing blog site where you can keep the track of what is changing every time. So now, before we start, I would like, okay, sorry, I just kind of watched the chat here. Okay, okay, before we start doing the campaign, I have prepared this like a guide that can help you to do this, uh, I would not say homework, the capstone, as Thomas said, to get the Laudato to see any murder certification. So I really hope this can be a useful guide for you when you start thinking about these possible ideas for Laudato to see week. The first one is the campaign goal. Describe what you want. If you want to talk about, I don't know, um, yeah, get more people to learn about the encyclical Laudato to see, like just make sure to describe what thing you want to achieve with this campaign. The other thing is that define the objectives. Write two to three outcomes that you want from your campaign. As I tell you, like in the first exercise, like my big goal was to get more Laudato Si animators. My objective specifically was to get 2,000 registers. So make sure to always write them in a smart way so you can know what it's what you want to achieve and be measurable. And in social media, I also want you to consider some type of objectives that are the most common. One is awareness. Awareness on social media means that you are going to inform. You want to inform about something, that's all. Engagement is when you want to go further that information. You want people to take a step forward in that relationship. You want them to give a like, you want it to comment. And the engagement is more to establish relationships with your audience. 
And in conversion, it's when people actually took a specific action in terms of, okay, I got informed about the .c animators. I share it with some friends. I comment the post, they're amazing. Now I'm gonna actually become a one and I get to register. So that click can be considered as a lead and it's a conversion of that user. Now, the third point is the target audience. Be really sure who you're talking to. And I do think it's important if you have the time to learn more about how to make a customer persona, that it's, it's quite a technique that we use in communication. It's a picture of an hypothetical user. Like who is the person you're talking to? And the customer persona, as I see it, it's very valuable because you can be actually able to describe the person you're talking to. Like instead of saying men, women, 30, 50 age, London, the, my customer persona is Steve. He likes, uh, he lives in London. He likes every single week to play the rosary. And he really is into Pope Francis messages. He really likes to follow Vatican news. And you have all this idea of who you're talking to. And because it's written as a person, it's more easy to you to say, oh, I'm gonna talk to people between 30 and 50 years old. Or if for me, it's even easier if I, have, if I can say, oh, I'm gonna talk to Steve. When I message something, when I'm creating something, I'm gonna talk to this specific person. And I think it's easier in terms of how you develop the messages. So that is like a strategy that you can use to develop your customer personas. And the campaign, the fourth point is the campaign tone. Be super clear of what tone do you wanna be. If you wanna be conversational, if you wanna be emotional, if you wanna be positive or neutral. I do encourage you because of the COVID times, today I've been reading like a report from Hot to Two. It says that now people are dealing with a lot of anxiety. People are at their house, not knowing what's gonna happen, not knowing when this is gonna end. And we cannot contribute to that chaos. We really need to be positive and provide content that, yeah, make people happy or at least make people feel good. You know, like they can read something and say, feel hopeful about the future and see that there are possible ways that we can deal with this together. So in terms of tone, because of this COVID context, I totally encourage you to be as possible and empathetical with your audience as you can be. The first one, the first point is the campaign content purpose. And this is very connected with your objectives. If your objective is to create awareness, well, your content will be mostly to inform. If your content is to engage, well, you will have to make influence people to participate. And if it's something related to conversion, well, your content will need to actually persuade them to take an action. And this is a good, a good uh, part of the step-by-step step that you can actually start thinking more deeply in the messages. Another point is the call to action. All messages in social media, in digital, needs to have a call to action. Please do not forget this ever. <laughs> Always, if you're gonna do a social media publication, make sure you're adding like, give me a share, give me a like, you know, be like super, super connected to that. And another point to consider is the campaign messaging. Now it's like the part in your plan where you're gonna actually draft the messages, when you're gonna put the story, the keywords, the key phrases you wanna use in order to develop your messages. The two last points that I think are the most important, all of them are important, but this is like the ones that guide your everyday work, and it's the editorial calendar. You need to put which channels you're gonna use, what's the, pur the purpose, what is the content, what's the specific message for that channel, what you're gonna use for that message. It's gonna be a photo, a video, it's gonna be an infographic, it's gonna be a story of someone. This also need to consider the timing, when you're gonna post this and who is gonna be the responsible for that. So make sure that in your editorial calendar, you have all these things covered. And the last thing is the monitoring success metrics. When you're doing this, and this is why it's so important to have a smart objectives, is because you put numbers and numbers can be measurable. So you can say, okay, I want, 2,000 subscribers. Okay, like this week I got 10, this week I got 30. And then every single week you are measuring and following your success metrics in order to see if you're achieving that objective. 
So I have put some of them here that are the most common for social media, page followers, subscribers, reach, num views, likes, comments, shares, clicks and links, links. These are like the most common if you wanna do something on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and like the other channels on social media. So I really hope this plan that has like some specific points can help you to be more strategical in order to achieve what you want. Now some resources and tools. Um, I have to be very honest with you because we only have like an hour. I actually think explaining like each social media channel to you, but the time it's not possible. However, I have prepared some really, really amazing links with further information that can totally help you to just sit and relax and read all this content and actually practice. So after this presentation, I'm gonna make sure to send it to you through Cheryl. But for now, I just really want to also share with you some tools where, the, for example, if in your campaign you want to design something, you can use Canva, Adobe Spark, Be Funky, Crello, and Design Bold. All these five tools are free, so you can totally use it. Um, of course, if you want to upgrade and to put some specific things, yeah, you will have upgrades usually cost, but in the free, I do believe you can have access to at least develop your creativity and create some really nice uh, images. And for programming content, if you don't want like to publish that in the same time, you can uh, always use Hotsuite, um, Ladder, that, and Whistlelet. These two last ones are specifically for Instagram. And um, I usually every single day, so I do believe they're awesome and can totally help you to program content. And uh, Hotsuite, you can program Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Instagram too. So it possible to use that one for all the different channels. And for monitoring, usually it's social media have their own way to measure its efforts. So on Facebook, you have the insights on Instagram too, Twitter analytics, that it's free also, Google, Analy Google Analytics, that it's more connected with website. And also in Hotsuite, you can also measure your efforts. So all these resources are really basic resources I didn't want to like to provide you any kind of thing that is going to be too much. So now, and this is like the final part of the conversation, we're going to start talking about possible ideas for your Laudato Si Animators capstone. So the first one idea that maybe can be useful for you, and I'm going to share a really quick tip too, is um, host an online prayer service. That could be something you can do to make people more connected with this idea of the echo conversion that is very clear in Laudato Si. So maybe you can host an online prayer. Do not forget to do a warm up. Every time you're gonna do something online, you have to inform with at least four days, I would recommend four days in advance that you're gonna do that in one day. And you can totally in the following days make posts like, on Friday, we're gonna have a, uh, online printing service. Do not forget to join the next day on Friday, 3 p.m. Do not forget, follow us. And like, just keep in mind that to people, of course, do not be like too much because that can also stress people. But if at least you have this warm up publication, they will know that that, whole, that online printing service is gonna happen and they were gonna be there and assist. That that's what we want, you know, that they participate. For that, you can use Zoom, you can use the Google Hangouts, and especially on Facebook, you can do the live directly from the platform. On Instagram, you can do it like through the stories. And on Twitter, you, I have mostly used Periscope to do the live transmission. So that could be one idea. Another idea is to host a digital conference to talk about Laudato Si. I know that this is your first webin your fifth webinar, and I know you have been studying, you have been learning about the data C. So I really now you are able to talk about it to other people, maybe choose a phrase or something about the data C that you feel most inspired and you can actually create a conversation with the audience about that. And then tip it's invite your community and maybe as as in the online prayer service, you also need to do a warm up and you can decide and, may, and post a really nice invitation, uh, create an event directly on Facebook so people know that's gonna happen. 
And always, 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 when you're gonna do a digital conference and an online prayer service, make sure to test your connection and presentation. Tools, it's quite much the same because uh, digital conference, at least now, that are very common. <laughs> People are using like Zoom, Google Hangouts, and social media directly live. So those are like the most common and I do believe the easiest. Another idea is to collect signatures for a campaign or petition. Here, for example, you can create awareness, you can make publications to inform, engage, and persuade people to sign. In terms of petition, I will really encourage you to, have, to consider all this journey. It's not that you say someone sign and that's all. You need to make sure that your message is what people are signing, why they have to sign, why it is important then to sign and try to add that in your key messages when you actually ask them to sign. So that will make it like more relevant to what they want and also to be more clear with your message. And for this, you can create some social media templates and always, always, always add the call to action. <laughs> and another idea could be create a social media challenge. And for this, I was thinking, because I was actually reading a very nice article about 350 that I'm also going to share to you, 350.org. They were saying like a possible challenge could be like you make a drawing about how the like, I don't know how the world would be if all people read and follow the call of Pope Francis in Laudato Si. So you make this amazing drawing and send to people, okay, this is the Laudato Si drawing challenge. And then you invite other people to make a drawing too, and then you become like just just you can start a challenge and eventually more people like through this specific activity drawing can make like very connected with this idea of audacity. And for this, especially in challenge, I can, if you have the contact, if you know like an, a very a strong influencer in your community that can help you to give a push to this, I totally encourage you to contact them. And say like, oh, would you like to join this? Like post this with us. So in terms of challenge, it's really important that if you have the opportunity to work with influencers, that can totally help you bust your campaign. And the two final ones are share and teach Laudato Si and Cyclical. Um, for this, I think it will rely more in the design programming that I tell you before. Maybe you can use Canva to design some attractive templates with Laudato Si quotes, and maybe your campaign is just, okay, I really want to teach. I really want to inform people about Laudato Si. That that's going to be my project. I'm going to do images with quotes, and in my messages, I'm going to ask people what they think, and I start conversations with them on, on digital channels. So for that, you can totally use these design tools that are Canva, Adobe, Be Funky, Crello, and Design Ball. And the last one, it's let lead an online climate strike. And for this also, because it's like activations, events always need a warm up, as I previously said. So make sure that you post a warm up publication to invite to the online climate strike. Also, you can invite users to share photos of their posters, their stories, and why they're committed to fight against climate change. So that could be another thing, like you do, do instead of like on presence, like an online climate strike. And I think that one, it, it's, it's really nice because even though you are in your house and you are all stressed about this COVID, people still have this necessity to be connected. And a very interesting thing that I was also reading during the weekend is that during these COVID days, all the messaging platforms, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger has going like, oof, up because all people want to stay connected. So I really believe that in terms of digital communication, yeah, the COVID is for sure something hard. All countries are trying to adapt us in this new lifestyle, but it opens so many possibilities for digital communication. And as this famous people always says, like this, these challenging times are also opportunity times for creativity. So make sure you have that in your favor when you are developing this campaign. And to finish, um, I kind of like we're running a little bit because <laughs> I would really like to dedicate some time for question and answers for you. Um, just these four final ideas that for me are like super important. The first one is always think in the user person. Yeah, we are, we are in digital. We all have cell phones where we are people behind those screens. So you're talking to a person 
and make sure to understand who they are, what they are, what are their needs, and how you can make that people, you know, use your information in a positive way and provide value to that user. The other point is to be creative and be strategic. As I mentioned, do not like, do not improvise. Please take some time to sit and think what you're going to do. Brainstorm, plan, have very clear what you're going to do, how you're going to measure, what things you're going to use to, what tools you're going to use to achieve your goal. Like dedicate this because it's super important in order that you can also optimize your time. The other point is like test and monitor your reports. Monitoring is so important and that's why they are in the step by step. You really need to know how this, how your reports are bringing you results. So make sure to at least, because in social media, mostly if you're not investing in ads, to at least measure every, every week, you know, every Monday, I'm going to see how this thing is it's working on, or at least three days, every three days, I'm going to go to the platform and see how many likes I got. Maybe this post was better than the other one. Maybe in this, I use a photo of Pope Francis and that's why it went so well. Maybe next time I'm going to use another photo of Pope Francis. So make sure to measure what you're doing. And the other thing, and for me that it's the most important, is like be patient. Technology, it's amazing. I'm a tech savvy person. I love technology. But even if you love it so much, you have to be patient. You have to read, you have to understand the platforms, and be always open to ask for help. If, for example, I have been working with social media for years, and I still have to write to the help center of Facebook. So, because sometimes something changed and last time you were like, what happened with this option? How does the verification code? Like that's super normal. So be patient and open to learning. Be always up, like my best friends are the tutorials on YouTube. There's this amazing uh, communication specialists that are always developing something. So do not be afraid. Oh, you want to like set up a Facebook Live? Okay, face, how do I set up a Facebook Live? YouTube. That there is someone that have already done that and can be totally helped to you. So be patient and open to learning. And uh, this is like some reading recommendations. As I mentioned, I have like to be very, very specific if I wanted to teach you the ideas, how you can actually do it, but on the details, like how you can text, how you can put a message in this platform, those platform, or how you can do the guide for a live video. I curate these links for you. Like, I want you to know that I also think about that, but because of the time, I prefer to give them you as curated links that you can review after we talk, and then you can give it the time because you really need to be concentrated when you read this. And um, now I have I have to like close the chat option, and I don't know how much time we have to questions, but maybe my my dear Cheryl can share that with me. Um, we have uh, 15 minutes for Q&A. So I'll just read to you some of the questions because some already typed in earlier. Okay. This just, uh, okay, let's just close this first. Okay, so there is a question from Jason. Is there information on the actual impact of, sub of subscription, retweet, like campaigns, in causing uh, concrete changes towards a goal. Because I've seen some studies that seem to suggest that social media campaigns frequently don't result in actual action or change. Well, that, that question is for a thesis, my dear friend. <laughs> no, what you're talking is actually truth because social media is a channel, as I mentioned before. And sometimes when you really want to achieve um, at this in communication, this is called communication for development. When you want actually people to do a change in their lifestyle. And for communication for development, campaigns should last at least four years and be 360. Social media can be a part of that overall strategy. But if you really want to do a change of behavior, you really need to be a, a tactic that it's usually used, it's repetition. Like you are, for example, now, that in the COVID time, we have all, all of us have experienced a communication for development campaign in washing our hands. Every single day in all the platforms, we have been hearing, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. 
So it's, it's so connected with us right now that we're actually washing our hands every single time and praying. Um, has this amazing announcement that I saw, our father, every time we're washing our hands. So when you really want to do a change in that level, in the lifestyle, you really need to develop a communication for, for development strategy. And that usually use a 360, uh, it's a 360 communication campaign. You really need to go in different. Uh, regarding social media, it's a tool, it's a channel, it should be used. And you should be very clear in what objectives you want and write them always in a smart way so you can measure it. So I do believe it's, a, it's, it's how do we say this in Spanish? I'm trying to translate this in English. It's for sure one wheel of the car, but the car needs more than that wheel to run. Thank you, Adri. And the second question is from Dan. Can you discuss some good free tools we can use to do online surveys as part of our information gathering? Okay, for survey, for survey, okay. I see two possible options. And I always use SurveyMonkey. It's free. I think the free option only let you put 10 questions. And the templates are really nice, so you can totally use SurveyMonkey. You also can use uh, Google Survey. You can, and I think that let you even do more than 10 questions. And I think those two, SurveyMonkey and the Google Survey form, Google Forms. And in Google Forms, you have the survey option. And also, also the another thing, if you want to do just one question, just one, you can do it directly on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. And does GCCM have any content or artwork images that we can use? Do we have this? Well, regarding Laudato Si Week, we are translating them right now. <laughs> we are actually translating them. And it's like more some images as my friend Cheryl said it to you, where our focus in everything is connected. That's the big message for this campaign. So yeah, we're working that for general public and we're also making some content for our partners. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna be soon or the Lodopsy Week website. So I'm totally encourage you to search it when it's ready. Thank you. And Mike is asking if you can um, explain a little bit more about online climate strike or how it's being done. Okay. Yeah, I was actually reading that on the weekend. Now what, what they're doing, and I think Greta Studios and the Fridays for Future organization has been like very clear and connected with their audience. What they are actually doing is like, I'm gonna put the example on Facebook. They on Facebook create an event. So every single Friday, they have a Fridays for Future climate strike. And what they do is that they invite people to share the posters, to share their stories, to use the hashtag, that's very important. And on Friday, in a specific hour, they are asked their followers to activate. And during that hour, all of their users, well, the ones that follow them and feel connected with this, with this event, they are going to put like a poster with the, their message regarding climate change and post it on social media and also tag other people to do it and encourage them to also participate in an online climate strike. It's like, I do believe it's very interesting also in terms of creativity and like teens now, I also been reading a little bit about it. Like teens now, I think it's quite of the hardest for them now. It's just like kids, how they stay like active by being at their houses. So yeah, that, that's the way they're doing. They're creating every Friday events and it's encourage people to share their posters and their stories. Okay, thank you. And you have so many questions here. <laughs> okay, um, this question is uh, related to reaching out to young people age ranges 18 to 35. What strategies, tips, or techniques would you give for this uh, to reach out to this age group, to the youth? Eight, 18 to 35. 35. Oh, they are t if 18, right? Yeah, one age. Well, <laughs> this is this is tricky because 18, 25, like at least in social media, are considering like quite a bit young adults. And maybe if you're thinking more about teens, that is because on social media, you can only enter if you are older than 13. That's very, very important. 
to always remember when you're doing things with you, they have to be older than 13. So if you're thinking maybe in a younger audience between 13 and 18, um, now they usually most Instagram and all of them are on TikTok right now. But specifically in the group you mentioned between 18 to 25, I do believe it all depends in where they are. Because if I'm doing a campaign for Ecuadorian people, specifically in my community between 18, 25, I also need to consider their gender. I also need to consider the social, socioeconomic status. They're totally going to have different needs, a different way to, to connect. But overall, specific in this group, I would totally encourage you to develop more your campaign on Instagram because it's a more like youthful channel all people between that range range age are using instagram even more than twitter or facebook so i totally encourage you to do it make visual content very emotional and something and just to finish that question and i would really encourage you to read more about this is that marketing that it's also very connected with communication efforts now it's like in a face call 4.0 and it's like the content, it's now more emotional. People just want to connect with brands that cares about the other. And if you are, you're talking to this target audience, like make sure you're giving it value, that you are showing this, yeah, like this position that we are together and that you are needed to change the world. You know, all this change, social change spirit is like very connected with this target audience. So just, just make sure to really understand first who you're talking to, not only in terms of ages, as I tell you, you can do the customer persona to really identify who you're talking to. And that can be really help you, really helpful in terms of what channels and what messages you're gonna use. And um, just a clarification about what you meant by warm up activity. Okay, a warm up is it's when you're gonna do an event. An event is on Friday. On Monday, you have to do a warm up. This is like a terminology in communication. It's a warm up, it's a publication that shares when you're going to do something. In other words, it's an invitation. The warm up is the invitation to something that is going to happen. Sorry, my communication wording. Yep. <laughs> and um, <laughs> how, um, a question from Anne is about copyright issues. How do you make sure that you do not have problem with copyright when you like you share something on social media or you problem, write something? Problem with? Copyright. Oh, no. That's super important. That, that's, that's a very important question. Copyright for me because I also work in design. You have to consider it. if you're going to use a photo that you don't have the permission to use, be sure you can use it. I personally use, even for the organization, I use pick the bay of sometimes we have to buy the photos from the Vatican or the ones that we already have that are shared through our animators or partners. Like if you're using a photo that you didn't take and you really uh, got it from a public place but I also consider this is like this creative commons um, credit authorizations like make sure you can share it and even if you share it always add the credit who take that photo that's very very important and I started working for GCCM since uh, February and since February if you think our Instagram accounts all our photos have credits except the ones that we take and I know we can like avoid the credit, but in terms, because we took it, but no, everything needs to be credit. If you don't have the like the grid and authorization and if you get it free from this platforms like Pixabay or FreePick, like me, be always sure that you have the permission to use it and add the credit. That's super important. Very, very good question. I, thank you for asking that. Yes. Thank you. And another question is, in a parish, there are often many older parishioners. So how do you reach to them uh, through a digital campaign? Well, and that's a good thing about creativity in terms of campaigning is that everything is regarding to the audience. And I know like for that target audience, I personally would do like a mix. I would do something 
in radio because I know there are other houses, they hear radio, maybe put like a poster in this like boards you have in the entrance of the parishes. However, even now, and I think we have to be very, very patient with the elderly, more with this in this COVID situation where they had to be forcedly to use Zoom, to use WhatsApp, to talk with the, I see, for example, my, my aunts that I love and that are elderly, how they're like trying to figure it out how to use WhatsApp. But they are there now and I only like encourage you to first identify what kind of channels they're using. Because maybe, yeah, they are becoming more connected in WhatsApp. Okay, so my strategy with the elderly will gonna be through WhatsApp because that's like the channel they are using. So I totally encourage you to first like do like quick analysis in what channels they are. And according to that, you can um, choose the best messages and format to reach them. Okay, thanks. And there's a request if you can uh, possibly send them some links to platforms that contain pictures which they can use for free. <laughs> Would yeah, you? of course. Of course, of okay. course. I can totally get it. And, um, okay, Debbie's question is not related to your topic, so I'm going to answer this. So Debbie is asking if there's a way for them, for the LSA participants to get in touch with each other. Yes. For going to set up a platform either through Google or WhatsApp for, for those who want to connect with each other. So we'll be setting this up in the coming uh, days. And, um, and not all capstone projects have to be only about communication. Yes, this is correct. Yes. Yes, that's right, Brian. Okay, so um, so maybe. No, thanks to all of you. I only have like one final presentation that I would like to share. I don't know if I can continue and yes, finish the sure. Q&A. Okay. okay, well, just, just to finish, um, I want a special request for all of you is to follow our social media channel. Uh, one is like on Facebook. We have in different languages. The mostly we use is English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Our Polish team also have one that is also very connected with the Polish content. And in Portuguese, especially on Instagram, where Brazil team has the one that also reflects its content. And we just open a one that it's, it's coordinated by the African office. So I also encourage you to search them. But overall, this is like our channels in English. Uh, Goa Catholic Library Movement on Twitter, Instagram, we have like Leaf Laudato Si. But in the other channels, we are pretty much the same. So thanks to you for participating and for being here. I will make sure to send all these in links and also include the one uh, connected to free images. Thank you again, Adri, for your time and for sharing with us your one year worth of knowledge. <laughs> I think that we have covered Communications 101 and 102 <laughs> today <laughs> in just an hour. So um, thank you very much for your patience to all our questions and I'd like to thank everybody also for their active participation um, and yeah uh, if you have uh, more questions you can just send it to me and then I'll forward to Adri and um, yeah all the links which Adriana shared to us it will be in in the learning platform we will share them for you and of course we will not forget to create the, the um, discussion platform for all the LSAs to connect with each other. And with that, thank you so much, Adri. And I'll just... Uh, summarize um, what we have discussed about possible capstone projects. So uh, we have, we can host digital conference for your family or friends to talk about Laudato Si. We can organize online prayer service during the Laudato Si week. You can organize digital campaign on how to care for creation, or you can do any, you can support any signature campaign in your localities, or you can also write your bishops or parish, parish priests about um, like requesting them to create a green team, divestment, or to direct their banks to remove their divestments or their investments from coal projects, etc. These are just some examples or some suggestions, but of course you are very much uh, welcome to be more creative in, in uh, 
in your capstone projects. And um, because time is uh, short, I wouldn't ask that anymore. So um, we'll just remind you that for next week, we will be um, scheduling a meeting with uh, each of you. So uh, we, um, I will be sending some email together with the other program managers to schedule these meetings to discuss more about Laudato Si Week and how we can participate in this celebration. And let's close our session with a prayer. God, our creator, you have given us the earth and the sky and the seas. Show us the way to care for the earth, not just for today, but for ages to come. Let no plan or work of ours damage or destroy the beauty of your creation. Send forth your spirit to direct us to care for the earth and all creation. Amen. Thank you very much again, everyone, and have a pleasant day. Adriana, thank you.